Hello and welcome to the In The Money Players Podcast special webinar using Stats Race Lens to prep for the National Horse Players Championship. In truth, the topics covered in here go well beyond that and I think will apply anytime you're looking to play a track you're not familiar with, whether it's in a contest or because of a big carryover opportunity, Stats is a great place to get your research done for that and can put you on equal footing with players a little bit more experienced when it comes to those circus. I'm your host, Peter Thomas Fornital. Happy to be back with you and joined by an all-star team of NHC alumni today who are going to be talking to you about how they use stats in this very manner. We will start off with the defending NHC champion looking to make some serious history with another deep run a second year in a row in a couple of weeks time out in Las Vegas. He is Scott Coles. Scott, how are you doing today? I'm great, Pete. How are you? Things are good. Things are good. You enjoying uh, the, the upcoming challenge you're facing? You feeling good about this uh, prospect of going back there and trying to take this thing twice on the bounce? Um, it, it's a much different feeling than last year, that's for sure. Being my first time last year was kind of nerve-wracking, and now it's nerve-wracking for a different reason because now uh, I feel like more people might show up and expectations just feel much higher. So we'll we'll see. And I also kind of been messing around too much and not, you know, playing in enough tournaments later in the year. And I, I don't even have my second entry yet. So I've got to figure, I've got to figure that out. So that's, that's going to be a much different experience if I don't, if I don't end up getting that. So work we will to, see, but I, I'm very excited. Work to be done for sure. Also want to bring in from the final table at the NHC last year and numerous appearances on the, in the money network throughout 2019, Matt Vagvolgi. Matt, what's going on, man? Not too much, Pete. Great to be with you. How are you? Things are very good. Last but not least, he's back from Las Vegas. He usually spends a lot of time in a city we affectionately called Lex Vegas, Lexington, Kentucky. He was in the actual Las Vegas. I saw some photos of him out there, folks. It looked like he was in a Fellini film. I have no idea what was going on, but he's back on the planet, Texas. Former NHC Tour champion. He's also the People's Champion and a big Stats Race Lens fan. Jonathan Kinchin, JK, what's up? Yeah, I like to think that I was doing some NHC prep out in Las Vegas. I was getting out uh, all of the antics and the uh, inappropriate behavior uh, ahead of a, a heavy work week when we get back out there in a few weeks for the NHC. It's a, it's a lot of things about the NHC are, are, are challenging. The grind is one of them. And one of the reasons why I think Stats Race Lens can really help you out a lot in, in kind of helping you eliminate uh, the some of the, the deep dives that are necessary. You can do some work now where there's a lot of things you, you can't really do to prepare for that. I think stats is one of those things you can do to, to, to wrap your head, your head around some ideas you might need and hear in a couple of weeks. That's a perfect segue into the first line of questions and we'll go back to Scott Coles to begin. I'll ask it in kind of a cheeky way. Scott, how did Stats Race Lens help you win 800,000 plus at last year's NHC? Um, so the biggest thing that it helped for me um, with never having to play that many races in a day, never, went, unless I was being really stupid and just betting too many races in cash, but in a tournament situation, I'd never, I'd never bet that many in a day. Um, you have your, you know, I think it's eight mandatories a day and then 10, ten optionals. But when you're looking for optionals, um, mandatories are easy because your attention is focused. They tell you what, what to do. You study those races and you're done. But when you have to scan 60 or 70 other races to come up with 10 plays, um, stats became a huge weapon for me because you can have angles highlighted in both green and red, kind of scan through PPs, and you'll see um, – you know, you'll go, you'll click on a horse, you'll see an angle. And you'll, I, I looked for either good prices with green angles that, you know, and then you kind of can dive in there. Or if you see a favorite with a red angle, that might also be a good spot to attack because then you can get a price on the horse that you actually believe will win the race. Um, it allows you to filter a lot of material in a short amount of time. And in a situation like this where the amount of options are overwhelming, stats really helps you narrow it down in a, in a much quicker and more efficient fashion. We're all about working smarter, uh, not necessarily harder. Usually it's work harder and work smarter. Let's walk through 
one or two of the specific angles, Scott, that you chose for this webinar to demonstrate the power of stats? Sounds good. Um, I, I think my first one is kind of, uh, I think, one that Matt and I will both appreciate because it will we'll eventually get to a horse called I Love Romance that helped us both tremendously in our wallets um, last year at the final table. But so I, I started here with Jonathan Wong at Golden Gate Fields, and the angle is claiming to allowance. Now, I did this for a few reasons. One, Golden Gate Fields is a track that many of us do not play unless you are forced to play it in a tournament. But it did come up at the final table. It did come up when I saved optional plays for late in the day, and I was like, oh, my God, I have three plays left, and only Golden Gate Fields is running. These situations do happen, so it's, it's one of those tracks that you want to get familiar with. Jonathan Wong being one of the top guys out there, I just used him as an example. You can you can research ahead of time and kind of go through and use other trainers at other tracks. This, this, this can be applied in a lot of different ways, but to dive in here um, over the last four years, claiming to allowance is another, it's an angle that happened to pay off last year, but it's certain trainers have good numbers claiming to allowance, but it's kind of a contrarian angle because people are going to say, there's a lot of people at Danny Shield here talking about hard rules. Like, I don't play claiming to allowance. I don't play horses unless they're over eight to one. I don't do these, this and that. And I, and I just laugh every time I hear it. And that's where you can just find value and find ways why, ways that you can win. Um, so you, you go here, you for 41% ROI, 7.6 success or 22% win on an angle that you might not think is um, a typical angle. And you can also... Now, once you get into the details that he's pulled up on the screen, you can sort by any of those columns going across. So if you just hit the distance button, it'll show you everything ranked by distance. You can take a deeper dive there and maybe look, okay, so now I have all these scrolling down, scrolling down, and I get a six furlongs. Hey, now you see six furlongs on synthetic. Oh, there's a few wins there. Two of them are double digit odds, which you can see right next to that. So maybe that's the value spot. And you can also go back and tweak your angle if you wanted to, not here, because it'll take too much time. But you could also, now you could add in, you could just change this angle and add sprints also as another filter if you wanted to. Or you can find, you can see that he's only done five furlongs on the turf three times, but he's hit the board all three times. Not a, not a large sample size so that maybe if you saw more than that on, on a different trainer, you could maybe add that as a filter and say, oh, this trainer really excels with this. Um, and you can sort by you can sort by odds. Is he getting is he burning favorites or are all the horses that are winning favorites? Not really the case here. Um, it's kind of it's kind of an even distribution. Um, so there's just a, a number of things you can do. You can sort by even jockey. You can to try to see if is there a certain type of race that he's excelling at or uses a certain jockey for. He's kind of all over the place here, but if you had a different trainer, you can dive in at a number of tracks with an angle like this in a number of different ways. Um, sort, you can really go down a rabbit hole, but you can you can tweak the angles and learn a lot about trainers that tracks you may not play in a short amount of time. Save these angles, and then when these situations come up, you're not scrambling to find them. They're highlighted for you when you come across them in your optional plays or if you're forced or fortunate enough, um, like we've all been on this panel, to be at a final table and when you're really scrambling and under pressure. So stats is just amazing for doing stuff like this and just kind of diving deeper into it. Start with one angle, tweak it, have a number of variations and kind of go from there. So when you find the angle, I mean, there's so much to unpack there. I'll actually back up a little bit and say, I love that idea that in a few minutes messing around in the program, you can, maybe a few minutes is too short, but let's say an hour, you can really get uh, a great perspective on the tendencies of top trainers on the circuit. When you find something you like, for example, this Jonathan Wong angle, you can basically tell uh, stats to remember it so that anytime this angle comes up, it shows up in the, when you're looking at the, at the entries for a race. So it jumps out at you. So that's very different. So there are some other commercial products out there that do allow you to do the deep dive, but what really separates stats for me and what makes it so important for an event like the NHC is that fact that, as Scott said, you'll then see it automatically. Scott, before we move on to uh, talking to Matt about some of his angles, was there another specific angle you wanted to share, maybe one that had uh, relevance at last year's NHC? 
Um, the other one that I had, I had come up with is another one where you can kind of build multiple cases off of it. But I, I did have one. Um, looks like we're pulling up now. Um, it is Chad Brown on the turf in a maiden special weight with a first time starter. Now, obviously, Chad Brown takes a ton of money. So this this angle maybe won't have the ROI you're looking for. But if you're someone like me and and JK that just like to like to play the chalk and aren't afraid to play the chalk. Um, you can really make if, if there's a tight leaderboard and you're looking for you just need you need winners. I'm not afraid to play the horses two to one, three to one, four to one if the situation on the scoreboard is correct at that time to do so. Um, so if you hear you can click on details here, but I mean he wins at 31 percent with first time stars on the turf, and it's another situation where you can sort by distance, you can sort by odds, you can sort by the jockeys he's using, and kind of just get a, a picture and take a deeper dive and look. Do I see anything specific that he's doing with either with higher prices, lower prices? I mean, if you look at all the when his horses are bet down, you know, at one and a half or less, and you see all the ones at the top. I mean, he he very rarely loses the horses that are bet down. So if you need a few dollars here, a few dollars there to move up or to make the money or make the next cut, a situation like this comes up and you have you have very high confidence that he's going to get the job done and you might get a little bit of a price because the horse has never raced before more so than a horse of his that has won several times or is a stakes runner. So you, there's opportunities there. Um, you can change this angle to dirt. You can change this angle to other trainers to kind of get an idea and, and save the ones where you see them come up with a high success score, a high win percentage, just to have in your back pocket um, and get familiar with other trainers at other tracks and how they're doing first time starters. I struggle in maiden races. So these are angles I like to save ahead of time so I have a better picture of who I should have confidence in sending someone out for the first time. They are going to throw maiden races at you in this tournament. Not ideal for me, so I just like to be more prepared in situations like that because it's not my strength. And this angle is a good example of how things can be surprising. You mentioned not expecting the ROI to be all that good. To me, that's incredible to end up being in the black with an angle that you'd think is taking so much money automatically. It speaks to how good Chad Brown is, the gut reaction, oh, yeah, he's great, but he's over bet. Well, you know what? If you're producing a plus ROI in a certain angle, it, how over bet really are you? And this really comes into play in the NHC. The, in these days, the band is so narrow. There are so few dollars between making that final table and being 20 spots out of that final table. If you can find a horse you can really dial down into, even the, a $6 winner at the right time, late on moving day at the NHC, that can be the difference between going on to compete on a third day and playing in the consolation tournament. So I think there, there's Pete, a lot to said. Yes, Jake. And, and another very important part of that is, is what I found in this contest is time management is of, is of the essence. And like, like Scott hinted at earlier, even a stronger advantage of using stats into finding a winner is into skipping a race that you shouldn't waste any time handicapping. When you see an, a horse that looks good on paper and shows up green on that screen that, that Scott was talking about earlier, where you can kind of preview which horses are qualifying for successful angles, skip the race and go to the next one because that's the biggest hurdle is, is trying to figure out what t what races to spend time on. I think that's a good point. Day and and it, the horse, th those that same horse, it could be a different thing on day one and day two. Early on that uh, $6 or sub $6 winner, probably not that likely to be wanting to spend an optional bullet on it. As you get closer to the bubble, all of a sudden it takes on a different measure. But regardless, stats makes it much easier to analyze that in th this one we're talking about in literally seconds than actually having to uh, spend time on a race, time that could be spent trying to dope out much bigger prices, whether you're talking about the optionals or the mandatory races at the NHC. Matt Bag Volgi, let's bring you in. We, you've talked uh, at great length on the show before about ways that you use stats when we are doping out our uh, Naira late pick fives on Saturday, as we do sometimes. But I haven't really talked to you about how you've used stats at the NHC, despite the success you had doing just that. Where do you want to take us for starters here? Well, I think to to, to start out, I think – Time management that that you know both Scott and JK have talked about are of the utmost importance when it comes to the NHC. 
Uh, I don't really have it in me to go through every single race and every single card. And, you know, why I think stats is so important to help you get organized or using technology to partner with your handicapping style. It's not replacing it. But what it does, it really helps me get focused and look at races and horses rather than trying to analyze tracks. A big thing that was said to me with a lot of folks that I talked to that have been to the NHC before I went out last year, and, you know, both Scott and I being in a, in a, in a same position where it was our first time, everyone told me the same thing. Don't, don't expect big things your first time through. A lot of it's going to really hit you in the face like a tidal wave. By the time you figure everything out, it's going to be halfway through day two and you're statistically eliminated. But you'll learn a lot and you'll come back the next time and you'll be better prepared. You know, for me, that wasn't, that, that's not going to work for me. So I wanted to try to see what can I possibly do to eliminate those types of things. And for me, on a regular basis, but also more importantly, on a, a, a tournament like, like the NHC, you have so many tracks, so many tracks that I don't really handicap often. The easy thing to do is to say, I'm just going to handicap the, the tracks that I know and I like, where you could be missing you know, angles that you like with, with, with horses in other tracks that, that you may not watch. So to be able to load this into the system, to be on demand, to be as detailed or as general as, as you like, and just to, I would say to, to start off by looking at some angles, the, the couple angles I'll show you right off the bat that I use on a daily basis and also with stats, you can actually have these angles pushed to you via text or email. The two that I'll walk through, I have sent to me every single day, and I look for these every day. And, you know, the, the one we're looking at here is what I call the low true odds angle. So true odds is an algorithm associated with, with stats race lens that, that gives a projection of a percentage, a win percentage. You can convert that to, to odds as well. What I want to look overall, are there any bad favorites out there during races? And then what I'll show you on the, on, on the next side, are there any horses that they project to have a, a very good win percentage, you know, 50% and above that are listed on the morning line of, of five to one or greater. But, you know, the one we're looking at here, you know, I, I think it's a pretty good angle, a very low success score, a, a terrible ROI. And what that's saying to me is a lot of these horses that meet the criteria that are short prices on the morning line, that true odds fields has a less than 10% win percentage. That's a race I'm going to concentrate on. That's a race I'm going to pull up and at least take a look to see, do I have any other horses that I feel can be competitive in that race and, and beat this favorite that I think is going to take a lot of money? And I think that's, that's one of the advantages on the, at the NHC is when that angle pops up, I'm going to put that race in particular, no matter where it is, on my radar to take a look. That could be an optional play. That can be, that can be a position where I can grab some equity uh, into that race. And, you know, the, the, the converse to that is, like I mentioned, is, is looking at an option where do I see a high-value horse, a horse that's projected morning line, you know, five to one or better, that has a, a, a great shot to win. And, you know, pulling up that angle, you really see that, you know, listen, when, when this does pop up, I love to see an angle that's, that's coded in green because that means we're, we're going to generate some profit. And, you know, to me, I really want to pay attention to these types of horses as well. I mean, look at the ROI, look at the you know, perfect success, success score of 10. You know, again, it's not the biggest sample size. They don't show up often. But, you know, again, if I'm looking at so many tracks for this type of tournament, I want every edge. And on a general standpoint, I think these two angles are, are tops for me just to get an idea of some cards and some, some races where I can, I can pick up some value horses. I think it's fantastic stuff. So much of optional play it's a real art trying to figure out which races to make your optional plays and what you're doing with the help of stats race lens with those two angles is making sure that you're fishing in the right ponds it's not magic you still got to come up with the the horse still has to win or you still have to come up with the winner where you're finding the bad favorite but if you can have a tool that instead of grinding on a race for you know, even even a short amount of time, like 10 minutes to determine the bad favorite, if that can just appear in your entries, talk about saving time and efficiency. Because of angles like that, you're able to spend time in the places that are going to be able to make the points that are going to make the difference. And I, I absolutely love that. Matt, I understand you got a couple more angles for us that might help uh, reduce workload. Why don't you talk us through a couple of those? 
Yeah, and, and starting from the you know the very basic, what we went over, of just an overview. But then you know what I love about stats is you can be as general or as specific as you like. So it's more of just kind of wrapping your head around. You see something, you know, even over the past weekend, I saw a few things happening at Gulfstream in Santa Anita where I jotted down. You know what? I'm going to run it through stats and see what the what the numbers say. I'm feeling that it's something, but let me see what the numbers have to say. And this is the angle that kind of came up here of. I kept noticing outside posts, you know, routing on the turf just have not fared well. And there's been a lot of favorites. You know, I've noticed that if it draws a, a good jockey, I noticed last weekend uh, uh, Joel Rosario was, was on the outside in, in, in a couple of turf routes and didn't get the win. And, and a couple of them didn't even hit the board. So it prompted me to take a look to see, all right, let's take a look at, you know, you know routes on the turf, you know, mile, mile or greater. And, and looking at a post position that's equal or greater to, to 10. So I want these big fields and I want to see, you know, how they've fared and, and, and am I onto something? And when I take a look at it, I mean, it's pretty obvious. I mean, when you have a zero success score, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not going to be very good. And you're looking at, at an ROI of negative 53%. That's something I'm going to pay attention to that. That's something there that, that I'm going to pay attention to that race. I'm more importantly going to drill down into the current day's PPs and see, is there a horse that's going to take some money that's on the outside? I may want to play this race. I want to, may want to see if I can find maybe another horse that's you know drawn to the inside and and has some speed. And I think that's also important too. Where the, just quickly the, the the next angle that that I'll show is and why I wanted to show this as an example. When you run an angle like this, for me, I like to try to play a progression where okay, I've identified something that I think can help me, but why don't I take a different look? Why don't I take a look to see? What about horses that are drawn, you know, let's say in the middle to, to the inside, you know, post five uh, inward and see, you know, horses that have speed that are projected to be on the lead, do they have an advantage? And combined with that outside post angle, I think you're going to see it here. You're going to see a 42% positive ROI, a great success score with these types of horses. So as a progression of building these angles, you can see I've got something that's negative, but also I ran the progression in the race to something that's really positive. And if I can find a horse like that, that's got a price to it, 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 it helps you immensely when it comes to the NHC of finding some prices and really taking full advantage and value of those optional plays. And I would say you know, one big thing overall, there's a lot of sheet players that, that, that come to the NHC. And you walk around from table to table, you see different you know, uh, you know, past performances or different sheets that they're playing. A lot of them are all the same. So there's a long shot listed on one of those. There's a lot of people that are probably playing that particular horse. What I love about stats is it's, again, partnership with technology, but it's also unique to the user, meaning you are creating this yourself. So it's, it's something that is unique to you and you're finding advantages that, that uh, you know, many people won't have in the room. When you talk about the post position data specifically, it reminds me of a card counter in a casino. Um, or, or knowing there was a bias on a roulette wheel. It's, if you can just tilt those odds in your favor by not only fishing in the right pond, but then knowing within that pond that over the long haul, you're going to be able to get value playing from certain places and be uh, hemorrhaging value, hemorrhaging equity over the long term playing from other spots. I just I don't think this is a way all that many horse players look at the world. And it seems very valuable for that. And then the other point I'll make is these are just a couple of examples at one track with all the tracks that are on offer at the NHC to be able to spend some time, devote some hours between now and when you get on that plane to Vegas. You can, as Matt said, come up with your own angles that are very much along these lines and end up putting yourself in front. I know there was another one, Matt, that you wanted to bring up as well. Just quickly, this is more of an example of if, if, if you're out there, you know, listening and watching and saying, okay, that's great, but how detailed can I possibly get? I wanted to show this as one where you can use so many different, so many different things to generate an angle or to take a look at something as specific as you can. But an option that, that recently I've come to use is, and this kind of reminds me of, of some of the, uh, the basics I've learned from, from Steve Chris of just being able to translate a morning line into what you feel the win percentage is. And again, the true odds algorithm allows you to do that within the stats angle to take a morning line and convert it to a win percentage and then also look to see is there a percent edge above the rest of the field. So, you know, this particular angle looks at who we project to have the highest win percentage, convert that to a 50% plus edge, 
and then you can really drill down to say, okay, I want to look at, you know, you know, different, uh, you know, a field size. I want it to be greater or equal to 10. So I'm looking for big field and, and I'm looking at it for, for a route on, on a turf. So it's a way that you can really use as many bullet points as you can. I'll be honest with you. There's a lot of angles, just like in my business. There's a lot of great ideas I have that are on a shelf somewhere with 10 inches of dust because it just didn't work. Sometimes you'll see that too with angles where you'll build this and say, you know what, I'm, I'm not really seeing anything. There's a few tracks where that's happened, but this is an example here where it does have a, a nice ROI, has a nice win percentage, and it's something I'm going to pay attention to. But I wanted to show this one just as an example of, of really how detailed and specific you can get when, when building these angles through stats. I like it, and I like I like highlighting the algorithm aspect that's within Stats Race Lens, where you can do things at the next level like that. Seems more more like a tool you'd associate with a, a computer type player than with typical handicapping software. And I think it's a good deep dive into the type of stuff that's possible. And the applications should be obvious anytime. Really, whether you're playing a track you play all the time or you're playing an unfamiliar track you have a chance to, to find a way in to betting races and doing so with more confidence when you're using the product at the level that Matt is. What would you generally say about that? Do you find it more helpful for your home circuit or more hopeful, helpful for when you're looking at a tournament where you're playing tracks that you're maybe not playing all the time? I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, I think obviously it helps on a day-to-day -day basis where I'm playing particular tracks where this stuff uh, pops out. But in an NHC standpoint, because I, I, my, my thought process is to save as much brain power as you can to building your, quote, you know, portfolio of picks for the day to spend more time there than it is rifling through every single race to the daily racing form and just kind of looking at every race and burning all that energy for to me. I think stuff like this really helps in the NHC because then it highlights particular races that I can then attack and go after and then decide. Do I agree with it? Do I not agree with it? But I think it helps me make that that overall game plan and the fact that all of this is saved and right there and ready for me, I can then devote more of my attention to building my plays, you know, looking at horses where I feel acceptable fair fair value will come into play. It really helps me on that side. And, you know, just as a quick example, in in the third day, so in, in the you know, the semifinal round, I'm up to my last two races. And really, the the ability to plan ahead of that day, it came down to really two horses. And I don't think if, if I would have not planned, I probably would have played a horse at Tampa that wound up going off at, at seven to two, which would have statistically eliminated me from the final table, where knowing that I had an extra play in that last race at Fairgrounds, I paid more attention to that horse, and I wound up, wound up playing that horse, and it ended up being you know, $125,000 decision. So... Not saying that happens every time, but I think being organized and using data like this can help you make the best plays and plan appropriately when it comes to a tournament like this. It's a great example. Now, JK, you're an interesting one to talk to because while both Matt and Scott used Stats Race Lens in the year they had their mega NHC success, you're somebody who has come to Stats Race Lens in the last year, but you're also somebody who I know puts in extensive preparation for the NHC every year. And people... People don't forget, you're no one-hit wonder. Not only did you have uh, the year with the two at the final table, this is going to actually, this kind of pains me running through your accomplishments like this, JK. It makes you sound too impressive. But it gives me a little bit of a complex. But you had the two at the final table, you had the NHC tour year, and then you had another year where you made the semis at the NHC. So you're somebody who clearly does the work and prepares in advance of this tournament. How for you has Stats Race Lens changed that process, and how are, how are you integrating it into your overall NHC prep for the first time as we approach the NHC in 2020. Well, I want to thank Matt first for ruining my next two days. I was planning on watching Bad Boys 2 tomorrow or Friday, but now, and, and I wanted to see this Aaron Hernandez documentary on Netflix, but now I'm going to be stuck on Stats Raceland's playing with that uh, true odds thing that he came up with. That's next level, man. That I'm like, my brain is going nuts on how that can really benefit uh, in, in, in a time saving arena. Um, you know, I, I think that the years that I had had some success, I, I kind of did a, a very uneducated, um, you know, I kind of same vibe as what I what, what you can get from stats. I was trying to save time, but I had to do it manually. I, I think Nick Tamaro and I came up with this idea where I set a timer on my on my phone for one minute and I had one minute to look at, at a race and I had to 
code that race red, yellow, or green. If it was green, I was definitely going to play it. If it was yellow, I needed to look at it again. If it was red, I was going to skip it. And I did that really quick for every race to get an idea. But that's just, I mean, I, now I've, I can do that even faster with actual science and actual numbers to support it. So that's how I'm planning on using it. I'm planning on using it as a time management tool, as a tool to, to, uh, to as a, you know, I want stats to be waving, hey, look at me over here, Oaklawn Park race seven. And then I'll just do my normal thing where I handicap like I normally handicap. I just want someone to, and something to help me find out where I need to be spending my time. And, uh, and, and stats is, is from what I, you know, the, the, the little experience I've had with it over like the last calendar year, I've really, really enjoyed, uh, you know, some of the things and the powers that it has. Let's talk Turkey about some specifics here, JK. I know you had a couple angles you wanted to walk us through. Where shall we begin? Yeah, I'm going to start with the, uh, with the uh, Oaklawn Park um, on the lead at the first call, uh, 10 to 1 or higher. Um, and th this whole thing is more, more about kind of showing how you can combine stats. Now, the, the win percentage isn't high. It's only 13%. Uh, but you'll notice the ROI over there is 95%. Pretty f a fair enough, um, a fair enough uh, amount of starts, 128 starts. And, and, and I, I like uh, that run style angle where you can project it on the lead. Now, look, that's just a projection. We all use multiple figures and multiple uh, speed figures. So you can always kind of check that. Now you might, it might give you a horse and you're like, well, that horse is going to be on the front, but still you can kind of play with it a little bit. Um, and like I said, you'll notice there's a, the 13%. Now the other thing that you can do is then you can, I ch then I went to another stat and checked another one. I did Oaklawn Park on the lead um, with a post position, post position of six to one or, or greater. It feels like outside speed was really good at Oaklawn in the last calendar year. And if you look here, um, when we pull that up, it was successful as well. I think it was a 24% win, a 37% return on investment. Um, and, and so that's obviously a, a pretty powerful stat that, that if you're drawn to the outside and you're projected to have some speed, you got a good shot of, of, of winning. And, and the return on investment there is pretty good. And so then, you know, like kind of how Matt pointed out how deep you can get into this. I then went back and I combined those two. I combined the long price, 10 to 1 or above, and I combined that with outside draws. Um, and, and you'll see it's another pretty strong stat. It, it comes back, I think it was like 14% um, win, but the ROI is crazy. Um, and, and so when you can combine those things, it's going to alert you if there's a horse that fits into this. Now, I might look at the race and realize, well, there's a first time claim down on the inside for Robertino Diodoro uh, in, in m and M racing that I'm not going to try to beat. But this is something 160% return on investment out of 63, uh, 63 starts. That's really, really strong. Um, and if you look, you can sort it. If you go to details, um, I think Scott pointed this out, how you can, you can kind of play around with it and sort it. And you go to official finish and you sort the official finish. It, it's a, there's a ton of horses that you want to play in the NHC, seven to one shot, 10 to one shot, 13 to one shot, 14 to one shot. And you see there, I mean, those are all those horses that kind of fit that, that, uh, that angle that, that, that the guys always talk about at the NHC. I don't play horses that aren't five to one or above. So, you know, these are the kind of specifics you can kind of break down into helping you identify where some of these spots are going to be. Two final questions. We'll ask them of each of you. One will be a stats one and one will be more generic NHC question. We'll start with the stats one and we'll, and we'll keep it with you, JK. What advice do you have to the players, people watching this webinar, looking to create their own angles? What's a, a piece of advice you could give them that might lead them to finding profitable ideas like the ones you all have demonstrated in the show today? We spend entirely too much time together. That's like, that's a question I wanted you to ask me. Um, <laughs> so here's what I would do is, is Oakland starts on the 24th. A lot of the other racetracks that are going to be in the NHC have already started Gulfstream, Tampa, uh, Aqueda, Golden Gate, Santa. What I would do is, is part of your preparation is I would grab PPs for those week, you know, for those races this weekend, next weekend, whatever, and start going through and looking at horses and, and, and you'll start to think of angles. When you see a Bob Baffert horse that is trying to turf for the first time, blinkers off. You can pop that in real quick and see if it's anything. Um, if you see a horse whose first 
off of Jason Service at Gulfstream, who's switching from going long on the turf to short or whatever, you can get a number there. So you can start kind of training yourself to finding some of these scenarios that could work out really well. I tell you right now, the first one I would do is the one that Matt pointed out with the true odds thing, whether you believe in the true odds or not, it, it, it's a guide down a path that's going to lead you to success. So um, play around with it and, and try to get some ideas um, for, for where you want to go. And the other thing is if we can, if we can go to the, uh, to the um, uh, research button real fast. I, I just want to, I want to show, I, I love this research button. I think you can do some really cool things with this research deal where you can look at these very specific situations for trainers and riders. Um, you know, Safi Joseph is, what is it? 34% past three years on the dirt sprinting and maiden claimers. I think those are really strong angles. So you can do a lot of playing in here. If you try to do something in angles and you can't do it in angles, the chances are you can probably do it here. Um, so, so play around with it. I just wanted to point that out. I don't think we have time to dive deep into that, but it's definitely a, a tab you should familiarize yourself with. All right, Matt, let me ask that same question of you. Advice to folks looking to come up with some angles of their own. What would you tell them? I would say, you know, I'm much in agreement with with JK, the time leading up to the NHC and what I, I mean, I'll give you an example of last weekend, I'm starting to pay attention to these tracks. I'm starting to watch, you know, uh, I'm starting to watch you know, the, the tracks I may not watch on a regular basis. And just things that I'm seeing, I'm starting to put some angles together, starting to see how they work. Um, you know, and just trying to get an idea of how many of these angles that I can come up with that I see I have some success with and just jotting some notes down. You know, I'm not necessarily betting a whole lot, but I'm just watching these races and paying attention and I'm kind of building that portfolio of ideas ahead of time, which I know will ultimately lead to uh, lead to success and, and lead for more time to build my picks when it comes to the NHC. So very much like JK, it, it's, it's a way for you to, to organize, to get specific and to get some ideas, things that you're seeing. You can then put the numbers to it and see, hey, is this something that I think is, is working or do, 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 you know, do the numbers tell me differently? Scott, how about you on that same idea? Um, I, I think there's been enough today. And like, I said, like we've, JK said and you've said, especially mass angles are good starting points with deeper dives. If you've never used it before, start by creating an angle that we just did for you. So you get in your mind how you actually do it going and then going through the process, you're going to see how it works. And then your, your mind's going to come up with, hey, I can change this one thing about this angle and I have a new angle. I can change two things about it and I have a different angle. I can change the track. I can change the jockey. Create a database of your own. But having gone through the process and making a few, you kind of learn or at least I learn by doing um, and kind of just trial by fire and playing around with it as much as you can, you'll come up with other things that you didn't even think of until you saw the angle list and the drop down menus that they have. And then you can just play around and you can also test the angles you've used your whole life and find out if you're actually correct about them. I mean, you might be like, I love this angle and just think about all the things you've done in the past. And now you can actually check them with the real stats to find out if you're right. I mean, sometimes you're going to realize that the angles I've been using my whole life are terrible or they are great or I can tweak them to make them great by the numbers, by the win percentage, by the ROI, and look at the scenarios and kind of take away the guessing and have them all at your disposal and just save so much time handicapping. That makes me think of the new Barry Meadow book, where overdue to have him on, where he and a computer programmer friend went over all kinds of conventional wisdom in horse racing and wrote a whole book about it, which things hold up, which things do not. You don't need to have your own programmer to do that when you have a tool like Stats Race Lens. And, you know, Stats even has some things that just a big database won't because of the proprietary algorithm that does things like estimate true odds and also uh, has a built in pace projector. Last question you can give one piece of advice to either a first time NHC player or maybe somebody who has played once or twice before but was in that deer in the headlights position, you can give this person one piece of advice to help them do better at the NHC in 2020. What would that advice be? We'll start with you, Scott Coles. Um, get there early, eliminate the distractions. Preparation takes away nerves when you know you're prepared for something. 
And then it comes down to walk through the room, get down there, make sure you have everything done early. You're at your table. Make sure you know how to use your card. Take away all the things that were that are stressful about new surroundings. We're going to ballets. I mean, I, I guess maybe it was there back in the day, but I have never played at ballets. These are all things you want to take away any distractions and anything that can affect your emotion, your mood, or your anxiety, and leave it to just making handicapping decisions when the actual tournament starts. So be prepared from a handicapping perspective, but also be prepared with the surroundings, how everything works, and have the work done as much as you can ahead of time. Obviously, stats helps tremendously with that. You know, write things down and be prepared and just make sure everything works and you know where everything's at before the tournament gets going so that you have nothing to worry about but picking winners when when that uh, that first race goes off. NHC Hall of Famer Paul Sherman once told me you can prepare your way to a winning mental state. I think that's underlined by what Scott just said. Matt, how about you? What advice would you give this theoretical player? Well, I, I agree everything that, that Scott said. I think those are so, so important where to get yourself familiar with you know where you are. I'm not recommending to spend more money while you're out there, but I played in the last chance qualifier just so I can get used to playing in that style of a tournament with mandatories and optionals. I had never played in a, in a, in a format like that, but I would say that the one thing when it comes to planning your plays, especially with your, your optionals, rank them by obviously not only your, your top plays or however you do it, but put the post time in there. And it sounds so basic and so stupid, but when there's a lot of commotion going around, a lot of tracks that are running, you hit a witching hour during the day where every track is running at the same time. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of things that can happen where you might miss a horse just because you forgot what time it is. And I, I, what I did was I ranked all optional plays. I put down the, the, the time, the post times on there, just so I had an idea of when they were running. I was paying attention to the board. And again, they're not always going to be the same. You know, I always joke and say that there's a, another time, uh, another time zone in this country called Tronic time. So you got to, you know, pay attention to when those races will start or whereabouts they are in the post parade. But I thought that helped me a lot to really focus in and say, I know when this track is running. I need to, I need to watch this track. I know it's approaching post time. That to me was just another way to help me organize and help me focus on on the horse rather than the uh, the semantics around it. I helped a friend playing one year design a color-coded spreadsheet that does exactly what you're suggesting. You put all the post times in, you can rank it in time order, you have to be aware, of course, of post drag, but it still helps you just to be able to then color code when the important plays are coming up, when the possible plays are coming up, when there are races coming up that you don't think you want to do anything with, of course, highlighting the mandatory plays. You can even lose track of those in the heat of battle in a, in a busy day, especially if you're scrambling, still trying to do things on, a fly, on the fly. So whether it's putting paper in order, uh, organizing a file on your computer, or, or my preferred way of doing a, a spreadsheet, I think that's, that's really good advice to try to stay organized. It can be chaotic, but as you guys have showed, as some other players have showed, you can have success right out of the box at the NHC. And if you take these steps, you're going to put yourself in a much better position to succeed. JK, your advice for a theoretical newcomer, and then we'll get out of here. Yeah, I like I like Matt's advice too. One more thing to add to that is people, you know, be aware of, of the of the, uh, the time change. You know, whatever you you know, if you depending on where you look, the time changes can be all crooked with the uh, with the PPs on the post times. You know, we're in California. You might be from the East Coast, but then you're looking at Gulfstream. It starts at nine o'clock in the morning, like. Be aware of that when you're putting in the times as well. Um, I got a couple. Uh, one is, is you know, identify whether or not you're a late night handicapper or an early morning handicapper. I think some people become stressed about all the work they have to do and they'll stay up really late and their brains aren't, they don't operate that way. They go to bed early when they're at home. Don't handicap at a time that you don't normally do things with your brain. Um, Go, you know, you're, if you're an East Coast person and you go to sleep at, at you know, at nine o'clock, you can wake up at four o'clock and it's not weird to wake up at four when you're in Vegas. Wake up then, it's quiet, the casinos are quiet. Um, you probably have enough morals that you won't be drugged down a path of wanting to have a beer at four in the morning. So like, it's a much more productive way for me to handicap in the morning 
Um, the other thing is, is, is if you're a shower guy, take a bath. Uh, the best NHC performance I ever had uh, that morning, my shower was broken. I took a bath. I take a bath now uh, every time that I'm in Vegas uh, on the mornings of the NHC. Here's one bath photo, folks, I do not want to see. All right. <laughs> that just about <laughs> does it for this show. We will be answering questions on the other show pertaining to the NHC. It's going to be a big focus. I'll be out there broadcasting with Steve Vick for the three days. We'll be doing some shows as well. If you have questions, hit us up. Easiest way is to use the hashtag AskITM. If you are not a Twitter person, reach out through our website, inthemoneypodcast.com. Lots of uh, good, hopefully, tournament content coming over that way, and we'd love to have you join us. If you want to read a book before the NHC, I did write one called The Winning Contest Player with plenty of advice about tackling the NHC in general and for the first time. If you want a copy of that, reach out to me at Looms Boldly on Twitter or through the In The Money Podcast website. Still time to get you a copy of that as well. Mostly, though, just want to thank our panel for all their time today and being very patient through some technical difficulties at the beginning. Scott Coles, Matt Vagvolgi, and Jonathan Kinchin, thank you so much. And thanks also to our sponsor, Stats Race Lens. It's been so fun working with them throughout 2019 and hopefully through 2020 and beyond as well. That's going to do it. This show was a co-production of Stats Race Lens and In The Money Media. I'm Peter Thomas Fornatal. May you win all your photos. <laughs>